I have wanted to state my intention to abandon heavier, larger, or tiresome, clunkier footwear for a while now. Um, the example I use is a pair of Lemmer boots that weigh about four pounds, if not four and a half together. Um, the two biggest cons I've found of wearing of either categories of this footwear, as in clunkier and or heavier footwear, both lie in the health department. So. I ask myself again, why would I wear heavy boots, you know, or heavy shoes or have clunky shoes? So for one, uh, there's a saying that one pound on your feet is equal to five pounds on your back. I think I went over this in the thoughts on footwear video, but there has been at least one study by U.S. Army Research Institute that back those statements up that it takes uh, 4.7 to 6.4 times extra energy when that weight is carried on the boot or shoe versus the torso, you know, or on your back, like a backpack. Added, there have been military, so again, something like this, it would be four pounds, would be, um, you know, 20 extra pounds on your back, essentially. Added, there have been military studies presenting that the weight foot soldiers rocked during the Middle Eastern conflict since 9-11 have caused an enormous amount of body injuries. So, and we're, I mean, we're talking about people that were like in their early 20s that were coming out with like spinal problems um, out of the military. Uh, I think the article from the Seattle Times and the sources down below will uh, go into more detail on this. So while there is nothing conclusive, there is correlation that this increased weight on the foot may be of a major or bigger complication. So number two is the heel strike. And this more, this also applies to you know, clunkier footwear. Uh, this especially refers to the, during one's motion or gait that an individual's heel will touch the ground before the ball of the foot does. So um, sort of reference, the ball of the foot is going to be down here and then back here is going to be the heel. And, and so what we're talking about is, is when this part strikes the foot and then goes forward like this, instead of it kind of stepping forward, you know, using kinetic energy to push down and then push yourself back up again. Uh, they, I think it's also been mentioned there's like a midfoot strike. I don't think that's technically any healthier, but I mean, there's definitely a complication in creating any footwear, especially with a heel, and being able to effectively um, do sort of a ball strike of your foot without, um, you know, sort of contorting your foot in, in some very unusual maneuver. Uh, and my thoughts on footwear video, I, I went into a little bit more detail on this. There was a... Uh, I mean, like, there's been um, sort of early photography even that uh, captured people, you know, running barefoot, and they would naturally land on the balls of their foot every time. But being used to footwear, people are used to, to striking with that heel. So, <laughs> on that note, as I've explained in my other videos without footwear, in the body training and using them, a, a human will naturally use the balls of their feet to land on each footfall. This is where the bulk of the foot muscles are located. In fact, I don't believe there's any located specifically on the bottom of your heel. Necessary to be used and developed to distribute the shock and absorbing one's weight and force with each step. Without using the force of each heel strike will result in the heel bone absorbing most of this force, sending the shock up the knee and all the way up to the spine. This strike is not something that even the best of foams or insoles and midsoles can prevent or nullify the shock in its entirety, but only the comfort the user on his or her way to future erosion. So as for the subjective though, I prefer to use the flexibility of my ankles and movement um, that is restricted by anything pretty much above a chuka boot or more than like a five inch boot. Um, here would be your example of a chuka boot right here. You know, something that's very short and sweet and leaves flexibility in that ankle. So, but the, on the other note, I also fancy lighter and more mobile footwear to have the option for, you know, having a stride once in a while. However, while I recommend wearing lighter footwear whenever working conditions are not necessary, and that's pretty much the big, you know, if in this video or, you know, exception, work conditions do exist requiring the use of either heavier or clunkier footwear, and as such, I feel it is worth stating the reasons necessary for wearing fatter footwear. On that tone, wearing a backpack of excess body weight is neither good for one's hoof either. 
if we're walking like we are a four-legged animal like a horse. Uh, work is the big reason. That is the time to switch out the sneakers for something else. Every other reason below can be wrapped into work as well, in which during that eight-hour shift or more, it is necessary to abandon foot health for something else. Certainly, many jobs require boots, steel toes, among other regulations that will severely limit one's choices. Um, so the biggest one is comfort, I can think of. Here, uh, the biggest example, again, is going to be like standing still. Add concrete flooring in a job, such as a medical profession, and one will notice many medical professionals like stick with their Dancos, or I, I, in some cases I've seen Birkenstocks. In other words, I would not abandon clunkier footwear for uncomfortable floors and prolonged periods of standing, like a medical profession, manufacturing, warehouse, or perhaps something like a flower shop where you're standing still all day. Um, you know, again, going back to the dance goes, uh, you know, I think I went over this more in other videos, but something like clogs, you know, are definitely, even though you can't, you can't run in clogs at all, you know, wooden or the polyurethane type, you know, the foam type, like dance goes, um, they're the ones I can, I can stand still for the longest periods of time without problem. And there's definitely, I'll go into more detail on this, something like um, whites or Nyx boots, you know, can have sort of an arch design that's, that's just extremely comfortable. Um, so the other reason is outdoors. And fortunately, while working outdoors might dampen the shock of any, shock of any heel strike, it does not take away the need for traction. So, I mean, even though the biggest culprit probably for heel shock is not just you know making each football land on the heel here it's doing it on concrete you know so you're increasing the sort of vibrations being sent up the leg uh you know stepping on uh grass you know or dirt or anything on along those lines it's definitely not going to give the same level of a heel strike you still need extreme levels of traction you know with something like the vibram or the vibram i'm not really sure what the official word is I think it's Vibram so the the traction that's required by work <laughs> and necessary usually from welted footwear that's stitched down like this as you can see along the lines here compared to something like vulcanized or direct attached footwear and glued on footwear welted has a reputation for the highest <coughs> highest reliability resolability and weight so I'm just going to throw out an example here. If we go back to this one, um, this chuka, something like this is going to be glued down. Something like these vulcanized stuff. I mean, I just don't think things like these are going to last, especially in hot weather or in, in conditions. If you break a stitch with something like this, the boot's still going to hold together at the end of the day, and it can also be resold, whereas the, a lot of the other ones cannot. Uh, so again, you just get this, the highest level of reliability from a heavy boot like this um so um added though designs like nyx four layer arch or white's arch ease as i mentioned their internals use and compose of some of the most comfortable footwear makeup that i have worn you know especially outside of clogs uh, other jobs such as construction roofing a logger or an arborist are going to need higher levels of traction and probably comfort as well so durability, um, as I mentioned about welded footwear, it is often difficult to achieve durability without compromising weight. Uh, certainly while many law enforcement officers have abandoned leather belts and leather coats for like nylon, has it also achieved the same level of durability? Even in my comparison of foams, like the lighter weight EVA foams that last are in most tennis shoes, um, it doesn't last as long as a polyurethane foam that's been used. Something like the red backs that I've reviewed here. This being the per polyurethane, this being the polyurethane, or thermoplastic polyurethane, TPU. So, like in my Australian work boots reviewed, as you see with the polyurethane. Welted footwear is often heavier than everything else, especially for work or outdoor purposes. But just so you know, it doesn't just come, you know, constitute, uh, welted footwear you know i mean even though something like this is four and a half pounds something i mean even these polyurethane boots are um probably about two pounds together 
uh, you know, perhaps even three, um, you know, and, and, and even on that note, I mean, I think that's why I use weight and clunky because if you go, <coughs> excuse me, something like, uh, you know, even tennis shoes will often have this same sort of thick, uh, outsole here. So while it might not be heavy and it might technically weigh under a pound, you're still talking about something that just got, it's just a really clunky heel design. So I mean, it doesn't emphasize, you know, uh, doing that sort of forefoot, uh, the ball fall, <laughs> you know, where you fall on the balls of your feet instead of the heel when you're in natural locomotion. So again, uh, even though, I mean, most things don't have this level of durability. Um, it's often heavier than anything else, but you know, especially for work or outdoor purposes required <clears throat> added, you know, I mean, if you do something like vlogging or firefighting, you're going to have a required set of boots that you need to use. So and that leads to me to my next point, which is of why you're going to need heavy boots next to, uh, you know, durability, outdoor requirements, uh, and comfort is utility. So I'm just going to include this as sort of a catch all for every other role a boot or shoe may need to function and pretty much usually for work. A steel toe being used, being the one that I used from earlier. Um, in this job, a boot is often required to separate the foot from outer contamination such as weather, water, or injury. As for warmth, um, a boot is often required to layer. So like one may see with stacking thinsel it layers inside the boot, you know, something where you'll see it either, it'll usually be put in between the two leathers here, or it might just be on the inside there. Um, so what was I going to say? You know, something like the thin sillet layers, or perhaps a liner is used, something like wool or sheepskin. Um, there also needs to be room added in the toe and ankle on up in order to let air be trapped for the body to heat. So again, you usually need a clunkier design because you have to have more air inside of it. Um, so, you know, something like this, it, it has to have these extra layers for, you know, one's body air to be trapped. For weather, one can imagine something like rubber boots or Wellingtons, or I think they're called wellies in some cases, where any possibility of water entering needs to be prevented. So much thinner Gore-Tex liners <clears throat> that you'll find in between the two layers of boots are often attempted for this waterproof function, but in my experience, they tend to either fall out um, or cause the leather to rot by trapping water for long, prolonged periods of time. So again, I, you still typically need that sort of thicker plastic or multi-layered design. And I've also seen that there's multi-layering leather for waterproofness, like you might see in Russell moccasins or uh, in using a leather conditioner such as silicone snow seal or other waxes. Uh, with Russell moccasins, I've seen that uh, technically a moccasin income, you know, wraps the whole foot in leather. That's, that's the technical term for a moccasin as far as I know. And with Russell, they'll do like two or three or four layers of leather around the foot so that the water just keeps getting trapped within those layers and ultimately is, is very difficult to enter the foot. You know, most of these types of footwear are just extremely water resistant so I mean even something like snow seal is only, you know really only gets to the point of being mostly water resistant um, but anyways so often these conditioners only make the footwear more water resistant at the expense though of noting that it suffocates the foot from breathing as leather is supposed to do hence why leathers used so much is that it's supposed to help with breathability and for the last utility of agony, pain, and injury, many heavier, clunkier forms of footwear are often needed to prevent these outcomes. Snake bites, thorns, manufacturing miscalculations, among other calamities such as motorcycle wipeouts, seem to be the biggest needs for these types of footwear. Added the need for longer laced boots, adding in something like ankle support, are necessary to prevent um, a deformation of the ankle, knee, among other parts of the limbs capable of shattering or severing without increased control or traction. You know, hence why you'll see like 
eight inch boots being required in, in something like logging. It is also worth mentioning that while EVA foams are often going to be used to make the lightest, most cost effective footwear out there, that many athletic shoes will not provide a close to ground or barefoot experience as the, the term is typically used. Many of these sneakers worn incentivize a heel strike. In other words, many of them have more height, especially from the heel to the ground with the outsole and insole. Instead of trying to prevent a heel strike, I believe, um, so here, I'll, let me just show you an example. I, I think I already pretty much explained this, but you know, as you can see with something like this, this this extra length here is going to make any form of a heel strike extremely difficult so um, in other words many of them have more height especially from the heel to the ground with this outsole and insole well the insoles technically here and the the midsole and really I think midsole is part of the problem with this type of footwear but instead of trying to prevent a heel strike I believe it attempts to instead absorb the inevitable shock of one so while I can make a a, a strike of my ball here it's going to look a little bit awkward with a design like this especially something so flexible like this um so instead it, it attempts to absorb the shock so while it achieves a lighter weight it often fails to get away from being clunky or clumsy to force a footfall onto the balls of one's foot a compromise certainly must be made since the designer must balance the ability for a natural comfortable gait falling on the ball of the foot and using the muscles in the forefoot to standing for long hours in one place. I don't believe most consumers are going to delegate footwear for each function. That is having, you know, a, a pair of footwear strictly for comfort and work and then having one for play. And that's really the big takeaway from this one is that even though work requires most, you know, heavier, clunkier footwear, it's definitely important to have something when you're outside of that until perhaps idealistically better designs come out there. So, and by, in my opinion, I believe that glued on footwear or perhaps vulcanized shoes might have the best ability for like a close to ground feel. Uh, I might do a video on the former at a point in the future to explain those thoughts better. But specifically I'm referring, I mean, this is something that would be vulcanized. I think it's like palladium, uh, your Converse All-Stars. I think Vans are also going to use that sort of vulcanized type construction. So again, going on that point where I was making about midsoles, something like this is mostly just an outsole. And then you have, you know, the only thing that's going to be here for, con uh, good lord, comfort is going to be that, you know, tiny insole in there. So again, you're, you're talking about something that's like, you know, you, usually very uh, thin, like a quarter inch or something. Um, you know, and while you might have a little bit extra heel here, it's not, it's not anything like something like this, which is, you know, at least an inch or two, you know, compared to something like that. So, you know, you, you're going to get a much more close to ground feel. This is probably more of your like glued on footwear. I'd call like fairy footwear, just because there's not a ton of companies out there that use it. They, they'll use like a Vibram or something that they glue on the bottom. That's definitely more of a specialty type design. So... In my opinion, like I said, glued on footwear, vulcanized, might have the best ability for that close to ground feel if you're trying to come to that uh, form of comfort or, you know, that natural gait. Uh, to conclude, though, there are many benefits to note for using this heavier or clunkier footwear, such as comfort, <coughs> outdoors, durability, and the utility of weather, water, and prevention of injury. However, while most of these functions are often required for an average eight-hour workday, that may require straining amounts of standing or like a regulated pair of boots. Um, it's worth noting that a lighter, more mobile pair of footwear should be <coughs> strongly considered for play. Something of which allows the foot to develop its muscles rather than rely on the bone as in a heel strike. So again, the, the big takeaway I'm, I'm going to put here is uh, for, for work, use use the necessary work requirements for comfort but afterwards for play uh, i would recommend switching something out in regards to that until the world changes take care